All right, guys, so this is a 150 horsepower electric motor that we went and took off of a plastic extrusion machine today. But now that we got this thing back to our shop, we're going to need to disassemble it and see what kind of parts and pieces we're going to need to replace. So as I already said, this is a 150 horsepower, weighs about 1,900 pounds, and judging by that tag, it has insulated bearings on both ends. Being that this is on an extruder and running through a gearbox, it looks like somebody put a pipe wrench on that shaft and tried to get this thing to rotate. Now it's probably not because the motor wasn't rotating freely, but this runs into a gearbox and it's on an extruder, so if that plastic or whatever they're extruding isn't warmed up, it's going to be really hard to rotate this thing. Now in tandem with the two insulated bearings, we also have the Aegis grounding ring that's right around the shaft there. Being that this is run off of a VFD, you can build up shaft voltages or shaft currents and they will discharge through the bearing races, and ultimately they will destroy those bearings relatively quickly. And it doesn't even actually have to be on a VFD, you can get static buildup from a belt on the shaft. Now after we take this bearing retainer off, you can see we still got one more piece sitting right in front of our bearing. Now this specific motor has two different bearing sizes on it, so we can't really mix up these bearing retainers, but it is a good idea to mark those. Because if you did have two of the same size bearings, a lot of times those bearing retainers are not the same thickness. We have one side that's going to be our locating end, and then the other end needs room for expansion. When things heat up, they tend to expand, and if they don't have anywhere to go, they're going to break something. There's two set screws that are holding this... There's two set screws that are holding this cover over this bearing, and luckily it came off pretty easy because there is no room to get a puller behind that thing. I usually like to remove set screws completely instead of just backing them out a little bit and trying to take something off because I have ran into situations where they have a set screw underneath the set screw. Now I know that sounds pretty stupid, but when you're struggling trying to get something off and then you see the skid mark from the set screw that you thought you loosened making marks on the shaft, you realize that sometimes there's two set screws in that hole. Now wiping my fingers around in places that they don't belong, I managed to get a metal sliver through my glove and into my finger. Now that we got all of those parts and pieces off, the last thing gatekeeping us from seeing the inside of this electric motor are a couple bolts on that end bell, and we need to create some separation between these two, kind of like you and your ex-girlfriend. Now that we've got our end bell off of that bearing, we can see inside the electric motor, we can see the winding, and this thing's relatively clean. Now I'll move over to the opposite drive-in, and I know you guys are going to say it's the non-drive-in, not the opposite drive-in, but if you look right here on this tag, it says OPP drive-in, that stands for opposite drive-in. Now I love these electric motors that have tons of information on it, so it tells you how many grams of grease you need to pump into this thing after so many operating hours. And if you're thinking, well I don't know how much grease you're pumping on my grease gun, it's measured in grams, so go ahead and get yourself a scale, take one pump of grease, see how much it weighs, and equal it out from there. Now I know you guys know that I love plastic fans, I think they're fantastic. There was a snap ring in front of this one, you always want to look for hidden snap rings, and then I got a little two jaw puller, I did end up throwing an impact on that, at risk of hopefully not breaking that fan. We don't want to break things when we're taking them apart. We want to fix it. We don't want to break. So now we're down on our knees checking out the shaft on the opposite drive end here. You can see this little grease ejection port down on the bottom. Kind of the same workaround as the other side. We're going to remove all the bolts that are holding that bearing retainer on. We'll be able to separate that. Now I do vaguely remember when we were taking this out of service, the guy said something about the opposite drive end making more noise than the drive end, asking us to just look at this side or I guess pay a little closer attention to it. And we'll get a couple action shots for you of the impact taking out these end bell bolts in the same way we're going to pull this thing off. We can take a look at both of these sides. Now that everything is exposed, we can see our winding. We also do have thermal overloads in there as well. You usually like to see those actually embedded in the winding so you're getting a good temperature reading, not just epoxied or tied right out to the outside of the crown. Now I know you guys are out there working hard, and if you haven't bought yourself your own Christmas present, I would definitely suggest buying this Olight. It is the Olight Arc Pro. It fits perfectly inside your pocket has the same magnetic base as the other one I showed you guys, so it sticks to things really well. You can use the Olight magnetic charger. It also has USB-C charging. It also has a fun little green laser you can shy to your coworkers. But seriously, I've had this thing for about a month, and I cannot stop playing with it. It also has a UV light on it. And if you use that little reverse clip, you can clip it on your hat and use it for hands-free lighting. Now back to business. We're going to visually inspect this winding. I don't see anything that sticks out here as abnormal. Again, very clean winding, very clean electric motor. Obviously not a bunch of material is getting inside of here. And now we can take a look at our insulated bearings. So you can see that white outer housing around this bearing, which normally would be metallic, but these things can't conduct electricity. I also noticed that they're pumping two different colors of grease in here. We got blue and we got red, and when you mix them together, that makes purple. Now, I don't know where you're from, but purple grease definitely doesn't work as good as blue grease. Just to be sure that our winding is okay to put back in service, we're going to remove this pecker head cover off of here, and we got some really nice long leads inside of this box. Which is good because, you know, over the years, the electricians are going to keep cutting these things off and getting them trimmed back to they're just six little stubs sticking out of this thing. We'll throw it onto that winding analyzer that we finally got back after this thing failed us. So now you're probably wondering what was wrong with this electric motor, and there wasn't anything wrong with it. It was that VFD that's in the back that powers this electric motor. The VFD failed. They said, go ahead and take the electric motor since the VFD isn't in and breathe new life into both of them. But if you guys were to throw out a number on how much you think it costs to repair that VFD, I would love to hear it. 
And now I'm going to show you the purpose of the insulated bearing. So we have our ground that's going onto the inner race of the bearing, and I'm throwing 500 volts to the outer race, and you can see that we do not have any continuity between the two. The outer race is electrically isolated from the inner race, not giving us a path to ruin our bearings. Cheers, guys.